Welcome everybody to today's Wednesday webinar. We're going to talk about ISU Pressbooks. And my name is Lisa Kidder. I work in the ITRC and with me is Ryan Randall and Mark Cooper. To give you a little bit of overview for today's session, we're gonna talk about what ISU Pressbooks is. We're gonna talk about some of the benefits, how to get started and some tips on editing. So to start with, we're gonna talk about what is ISU Pressbooks. It is a book production software. Uh, it's very easy to use. It's ISU branded, so thus the ISU Pressbooks, and it uses a similar interface as WordPress. So if you've seen WordPress or heard of WordPress, it's a very similar interface for that digital creation online. And the skills will transfer from any other editor that you have. All of this will help you create a professional quality digital book and it also helps because you have tools for formatting and layouts in that book interface, which Ryan is gonna talk about a little bit later. At Idaho State University, we encourage you to use ISU Pressbooks. You can create, remix, and reuse OER materials. Pressbooks helps with the copyright and license management. So if you are familiar with Creative Commons and those other things, it works very nicely within that interface. This is a perfect tool to help you create OER textbooks and materials. OER stands for Open Educational Resources. This means that the educational resources are open to all. And not only do, does it help and support your students in your class, but it can also reach worldwide. ISU, open, ISU hosts an Open Education Week every March, and it's coming up fairly soon, so you can learn more about the OER efforts here at ISU. There's some grants available and some opportunities for you to participate and using ISU Pressbooks is a great way to fulfill the needs of those grants and to support ISU students in reducing the overall cost of textbooks. And next, Mark is gonna talk a little bit more about the benefits of ISU Pressbooks. Thank you, Lisa. All right, let's talk about the benefits of um, ISU Pressbooks and there are many. This is a very underutilized tool that we have available to us at ISU. So hopefully after today, you'll consider at least playing around with Pressbooks. But one of the benefits is you can create customized course materials and open educational resources, like Elisa said. And this allows you to create not only textbooks, and I think that's a big misconception is a lot of faculty think, oh, wow, I, that means I have to create a textbook. And you don't. You can create a rubric. You can re, uh, create a instructional material that you use in your course. It doesn't have to be a textbook, uh, but it allows you to create custom content and tailor that to specific curriculum in your course. And Open Educational Resources provide students with free or low cost learning materials. And so you can create that for them, um, or you can search other people's press books to find open educational resources as well. So ISU Pressbooks gives you flexibility and adaptability. So those instructional materials that you create, you can easily update and revise those in ISU Pressbooks in response to any changes that there are in the curriculum or in emerging research advancements in the field. And you can quickly go in and you can update your materials. Uh, it also gives um, the user, your students, um, accessibility, and you can utilize the, um, the resources of Pressbooks to uh, include all images, all text for images, accessible navigation, and compatibility with screen readers. So that's a great benefit for using ISU Pressbooks. Collaboration, uh, you can collaborate with colleagues, instructional designers, and other stakeholders to develop and review the course materials. You can do that across ISU, you can do that across um, other institutions that you have within your colleague network. ISU Pressbooks has a global reach, so you can share this expertise widely on the web, and those who access your content don't have to log in to access um, your content on ISU Pressbooks. And finally, research and scholarship. So you can publish and disseminate your research findings, academic publications, scholarly works, 
and increase your visibility within the academic community. So those are just a few of the many benefits to ISU Pressbooks. And I'm going to turn it over to Ryan, and he's going to talk about how to get started and how to use Pressbooks. Great. Thanks, Mark. So first of all, I wanted to let you see what these look like to begin with, because we've been talking about it a bit, but at least for me, I would want to know what the output looks like before somebody tells me how to start editing it. So here is an example of one of the press books that we have currently at ISU. This one was made by another person in the ITRC, uh, Lance Rowe, and this one's all about open pedagogy. So I'm... In this video, I'm sort of just scrolling down so you can see this is the very first page when you load this up. The viewer can see all of, it, all of the different chapters, the parts, and the overall information. So there's automatic metadata that you can specify about the subject, the institution, those sorts of things. Then when you click on read the book, there's also this nice usable table of contents that will appear. And so you can click through to expand things and then jump to particular locations. They can include videos embedded within the page. And they also include, um, you can use H5P activities. So right now I am dragging and dropping different potential answers. This is just a sort of check your knowledge type interact element, it doesn't actually pass grades back to any LMS. It just is for someone to know how well they've done. I did that randomly. It lets me know I got three out of six. And then I, if I want, can see what the answers actually are. So that's a very brief glimpse into what Pressbooks look like once they're done. And not only can you read them on the web, as that one just showed, but also on the right here, you can see underneath the cover of this particular book, you can see where it says download this book. This is something optional you can set. Lance hasn't set that on his book, but this one I did as an example to make sure you could see this. And so you can actually download books in a range of different formats. So as you can see, when this goes open, there's something like nine different potential ways someone could download this in all those different formats. So that just allows people more flexibility. Both you as the author get to set that, so you have that flexibility as to whether or not you want it to only be able to be accessed online, or if you want people to be able to download PDFs or other versions, they can. Here's how you can actually start using ISU Pressbooks. First thing you'll want to do is go to the URL that you'll see in a second, but when you get there, in the upper right hand menu, the last of the options is to sign up. And so if you have an at isu.edu email, that's all you need to be able to um, sign up for an ISU Pressbooks account. And then these are the specific steps. First, go to isu.pressbooks.pub slash getting started, all is one word. Then select sign up as I just showed you in the upper right. Choose your username. This could be one that is not linked to the single sign-on that you use most other places for your ISU accounts. This is a separate one. Make sure to use your isu.edu email address though. Then create, confirm, and please also write down your password somewhere that you'll keep. And highly recommended, when you go through this process, at the very end, there's an option to either create a book or to register your book later. I would highly recommend that you use the register my book later option because the one thing that you cannot change about a press book is the URL for it. So for instance, the getting started part of the URL you see at the top of this list, that's the one thing you can't change. Myself, I usually tend to come up with an excellent snappy title at the end of a process, not at the very beginning. So if you do choose to create a book immediately, I'd highly recommend that you include the word draft or dev or development, something like that. So then if you do end up getting better inspiration later on, you haven't already taken over that URL 
with your development version. So if you're someone who has a development version of a course and then later makes the actual public version, you can use a similar process within Pressbooks by just having a development version of your book, then cloning it to make the final, more polished one available at the end. And here's how you can actually edit an ISU Pressbooks. This is after I've logged in, and this is, we'll quickly see that I start typing and then select some of the text and then use the paragraph or other types of both the icons and also key commands will work with this. And so you'll see examples of both. Here I highlight that entire phrase and turn it into a heading too. Here I use the icon to make that bold. Here I use a key command and you can see that it also selected the italics and also ISU Pressbooks has other sorts of styles that you might be familiar with from textbooks. So they have sidebars and other sort of layout level styling in addition to just bold or italics. And then that final glimpse is what it looks like in the rendered page. So what the readers would see as opposed to what you see as you're creating it. Lisa, would you please go ahead and have space for people to ask questions if they would like? So now's the time to ask questions. Feel free to turn your microphone on or put them in the chat. Tiger Tracks in Moodle ISU has other items. And then watch for more future Wednesday webinars and accessibility resources, especially as you're working on creating your books. Again, reach out to us. We're happy to help with any of your questions or brainstorm. You can meet with us in Zoom, in person, make an appointment, the time that works for you. And again, watch ISU today, Idaho State today. There'll be more Wednesday webinars. We hope that these have been helpful for you. And if you want, you can follow the link in the chat that will take you to these three slides with clickable links so you can explore more resources. So thanks for joining us today and hopefully you have found this helpful.